right, so this video is about learning how to change the motor efficiency slash pump efficiency in eQuest. So first off, to download the eQuest file, you want to go to Learning Materials and Building Modeling Files and Help and download those two files. And you want to locate them and put them on the same folder and locate them and open the double click on the PD2 file and eQuest should open right up. Once that opens up, you want to go to the Waterside HVAC tab. So if it's not already there, click the Waterside HVAC. And then you want to um, make sure component trees check down here. And you can either do the um, chilled water um, pump or the hot water pump. So one of them is coming from a boiler, one of them is coming from a uh, chiller. Uh, they're both basically going to air handling units um, from there. So let's do the chilled uh, water loop pump. And we can see right now we have the motor efficiency and the mechanical efficiency. And the mechanical efficiency, you can see if you stay on there, is the mechanical efficiency of the pump impeller. So the efficiency of the system is those two multiplied together. But what we want to do is be able to change those two and see what happens. So let's keep them like they are for now and run the simulation and then change them and see what happens. So if you perform the simulation and then view the detailed simulation output file. We want to do. We want to see two things in here. First off, we want to go to the building utility performance, and we're going to write those numbers down in Excel. Um, so, so the first one is kilowatt hours in therms. There's two hundred sixty-nine thousand three hundred fifty-five kilowatt hours, and two thousand seven hundred fourteen therms. Okay, and so that's the first. Um, condition. The other thing we want to make sure we, we look at is we want to look at not just the building utility performance but also the PV-A which is the plant design parameters. Why do we want to look at that? Well we want to look at that because we want to find the power of the pump and because if we're going to replace this pump, we better replace it with a pump that can put out the same power. So if we're going to replace the chilled um, water loop pump, the power is about 3 kilowatts, and we have to convert that to horsepower to figure out uh, what kind of pump we want to replace it with. Now, this would be um, useful in your financial analysis because you can look up the cost of uh, that size pump. But then you can see we have the mechanical efficiency and the motor efficiency here. So that's where that is. Okay, so now that we see those two things, now let's see what happens when we change the efficiency. So let's just change it to a really good motor which is, you know, say 91% efficient. So let's change that. Let's perform the simulation again. And we're just going to look at the utility performance because, oh, well, let's look at the plant design parameters and make sure, yep, so see our motor efficiency went up. And this is another important fact is that you don't need um, as much power going in if your efficiency is higher. So with a more efficient um, motor, you don't need as much electrical power going in. So that's why that kilowatt's different. So we'll have to talk a little bit about that in class as to how you can figure out what actual horsepower uh, your pump is. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. And let's look at the building utility performance. So let's look at the difference between this. We open up our Excel sheet. Before, our kilowatt hours was 269,000. And now, it's 268,528. So not a huge difference, but still a difference. And let's see if the therms are any different. The therms are not any different, which is good. So that's sort of in a nutshell how you would do that. But you could also change the uh, mechanical efficiency so that your pump efficiency increased as well see what kind of effect that has. And then once you take utility rates into account, this will this will uh, show you what's going on there. And that's it.